Marketers are making millions using deepfake ads. Here's how. Deepfakes are digitally manipulated media, typically videos, created using advanced artificial intelligence techniques such as deep learning and neural networks. Deepfakes involve superimposing an individual's face, voice, or other characteristics onto another person's body or altering an existing video to create a highly realistic but entirely fabricated representation. The technology behind deepfakes has evolved rapidly in recent years, allowing for increasingly convincing manipulations that are often difficult to distinguish from authentic content. Last time, I personally experimented with deepfakes was back in the beginning of 2022, and I must say that things have progressed at an insane rate. We now not only have readily available deepfake tools that we can use to manipulate existing media, but readily available deep voice and lip syncing tools too. Now, the key element of focus within this video is how deepfakes are currently being used for marketing purposes. We'll be going over a couple of ads that I've been able to spot, a few black hat ones, one legally done and one semi-legally done. And side note, we're also going to be interviewing a lawyer regarding the legality of deepfake ads and we'll also be obtaining quote unquote legal advice on how legal or illegal the ads in question are. A couple of months ago, we had a certain deepfake go viral all across TikTok of Joe Rogan and Andrew Huberman. The company behind these deepfakes is a company called Top Shelf Grind and they've got a variety of performance enhancing products alike to nootropics, coffees, etc. The setup of the ad was simple. The product advertised was highly alike to Joe Rogan's Alpha Brain, which made it even more believable. And Andrew Huberman, one of the biggest YouTubers in the biohacking and longevity space, wasn't even deep faked. He was just cut up out of context. Here's the ad. Category of supplements that are very interesting work very well to increase testosterone by about 100 to 200 points. Well, look, that Alpha Grind product right, is all over TikTok. If you go to Amazon and you type in libido booster for men, you're going to find it right at the top. And that's because guys are figuring out that it literally is increasing size and making a difference down there. It simulates the testes if you got those to make more testosterone or estrogen. Now this ad isn't a full deepfake. Instead, I reckon they just used something like voice.ai and then had wave to lip run over the ad to sync the lips to the fake voice added on top of the video. The result is a faked conversation between two prominent figures shilling a product they would have likely never shilled even if they were paid. For those unaware, wave to lip is another deepfake model, but it works a little differently from how typical deepfakes are done. And I'll be explaining how to make them in another segment of this video. Most deepfakes are done with an actual actor, filming himself talking about something, or in some cases, not even talking at all. Once the video is complete, they'll then create a deepfake over the initial video by training a certain model on it and applying the face of the actor that would like to quote unquote deepfake. The process is very GPU intensive and most people don't have the graphics card necessary to do this at a believable level. So what they'll do instead is use a method like wave to lip where they'll upload a certain video they want to alter it, upload the fake audio they want in the video and have their video lip synced to the fake audio. Now, if you're wondering how they're able to create believable fake audio, that's honestly fairly easy. And that can be done quite cost effectively using tools like Voice AI, Eleven Labs, or others. Simple stuff. But the legality of this specific deepfake is where it gets even more murky. Joe Rogan has ownership in a new tropics company called Onit, which launched Alpha Brain. The product being promoted in the deepfake is called Alpha Grind. Joe Rogan could literally take Alpha Grind to court not only on grounds associated with deceptive marketing, but also for his rights of publicity. Deceptive marketing is honestly pretty self explanatory, but rights of publicity are essentially legal rights that protect a person person's name, image, voice, or other unique characteristics from being used without their permission, usually for commercial purposes like advertising or selling products. A lawsuit on the grounds of both rights of publicity and copyright, as they are using his content, would be a little alike to the one where Michael Jordan sued a Chinese company called uh, I'm probably screwing up the name, but the company was called Qdan Sports. They were basically using the Chinese version of his name and his Jumpman logo. The Chinese Supreme Court ruled in Jordan's favor and forced the Chinese company to pay damages as it was ruled that they were profiting from both his name and his fame. As you might have seen by now, deepfakes have quite the potential legal liability. And whilst there isn't a specific framework right now in most jurisdictions related to deepfakes, you can be sure that there'll be many soon. Another variation of another Alpha Grind deepfake ad is essentially this one. Well, Alpha Brain was good, but honestly, compared to Alpha Grind, it's bunk. Alpha Grind is just the next generation. And the coolest thing is that it's essentially just coffee. It tastes the exact same, except it has all of these alpha boosting ingredients that just turbocharge everything. It makes you feel like a man. In this ad, we're very likely seeing another waf to lip or wave to lip variation where a real Joe Rogan video was lip synced using a fake voice voice model to trash Alpha Brain and promote Alpha Grind instead. Once they got the video done, they'll then edit it as 
Osprey TikTok's best ad practices, add some music, some subs, some B-roll, and voila, you've just got Joe Rogan on your ad for free. But again, the legality. It might be free for today, but I'm close to certain that there will be future legal fees and damages attached to something of this sort. I'm not sure if it's Alpha Grind's affiliates doing this or the actual company itself, but damn. So far, most of the ads have been removed from TikTok and Andrew Huberman has called out the ad himself, meaning he and his lawyers are likely aware. And whilst the ad did go viral and likely resulted in many sales, it's also picked up a lot of backlash with many calling the company a scam for its deceptive marketing. Here's what Fabio Marino, a lead IP trial lawyer had to say regarding both the ads and deepfake ads in general. One of the issues with deepfakes, right, is that it tries to exploit one of the holes in the intellectual property protection regime. We have good laws for patents, for copyrights, and for trademarks. But somebody's face and personality is not doesn't squarely fall within any of those three. So the law that most closely applies here is the right to publicity, which is a state right that is recognized in a majority of the US states, but not all of them. Uh, I happen to live and practice in California, which is because of Hollywood right, being at the forefront of protecting publicity rights. And so in California, you would have a cause of action by the personality who's being used for the deep fake to sue the infringers for using their uh, likelihood with li likeness without permission. And the test is number one, whether the use is commercial. And in this case, because all three are ads, you know, obviously they would have a good case that the use is commercial. They're trying to hawk a product. All of the cases that have been previously decided tend to have that kind of and you know one of the interesting things is that in the past usually one of the issues that the courts were wrestling with is it is the personality recognizable well on a deep fake that's not an issue right another example of a deep fake ad that went viral was the one done by Rialfa. Rialfa is an investment platform that allows you to invest in Airbnbs and the ad they used is very much different from the previous two that we've seen so far in the context of it being mostly comedic was being a very apparent deep fake the context of the ad itself is that Rialfa kidnapped Elon Musk and wants him to join their board. Deepfake Elon then proceeds to shill the company in return for his freedom whilst making humorous remarks about his potential captors and his businesses. Here's a snippet of the ad for you guys to see for yourself. Oh, Elon here. I'm a little tired up at the moment. At first, I thought this was a revenge kidnapping by Grimes. Then, after six days and... Cycling like through all my enemies, and let's face it, I have a lot more enemies than Bezos and his millions of underpaid employees. I decided it wasn't any of them. So, who did this, you ask? Well, it's probably not the smartest to disclose that information. What's different about this ad as opposed to the other two we've seen is that this one is clearly a deepfake. And whilst getting close to a million views and tons of media coverage from outlets like CNBC, the company behind it didn't get the same negative backlash as Alpha Grind got. Instead, it was mostly positive, as can be seen from the comment section from the ad itself. I don't think we Alpha got the rights from Elon Musk to do the deepfake, but as per this interview with this lawyer on CNBC, this format of deepfakes is more acceptable and, quote unquote, less likely to be illegal. Seems like deepfake ads are illegal legal gray area to say the least, with the full legal end of the spectrum being the celebrity actually giving you the rights to use their persona, and the illegal end being the advertiser tricking masses with no rights, no disclaimer, no apparent effort to highlight that the content is a deep fake, and all done for outright profiteering. Rialfa seems to have hit somewhere in the middle. Here's what Fabio had to say regarding this less aggressive format of deep fake ads. Now you're getting into an area where the fair, the fair use like defense becomes possible because you're not just taking the likeness and creating the impression the famous person is advertising the product, you're adding a layer that might be protectable expression under the First Amendment. But so the more it looks like a parody, for example, one of the seminal cases in the US on parody was the two life crew song Pretty Woman, which sounds very, very different than the Roy Orbison song Pretty Woman that's in the famous movie. And in that case, you know, the Supreme Court went back and forth and ultimately remanded the case to the to the court below to decide. Because yes, there was a commercial use, it was a potential you know, replacement because they were both songs being sold to the public, but there was parody, right? There was social commentary with a rap group taking a classical ballad 
and kind of making fun of it. So in this case, at least you have the contours of a fair use defense because they could say, yes, it's a deep fake. So the, the public would, would not think it's Elon Musk and then they would think that we are actually making fun of Elon Musk. The closer they can get to, the, to proving that, the better the defense gets. By now you're probably wondering, okay, great job explaining deepfakes and how they're being used for marketing, but how do I spot them? Your best weapon for this is common sense. A good majority of deepfakes typically have something off with them. A video of Joe Biden talking about how you need to buy his health insurance plan is a little off to say the least. Joe Rogan shilling penis enlargement powders is also a little off to say the least. But sometimes they're actually really well done. In that case, you've got to fight fire with fire. There's already a couple of providers on the market like Deepware, which have made their deepfake detection systems available to the public. Essentially, all you need to do is download the video you're questioning, upload it to Deepware, and you should have an answer in a couple of minutes. Note, however, that the detection system isn't perfect. A good portion of deepfakes actually pass the detection test. Detection systems aren't entirely foolproof, but if you apply common sense, be skeptical about what you see online, and use the detection systems, you should be well equipped to combat the ever-increasing fakes you're bound to encounter online. By now, you're also likely wondering what the future of deepfake ads is. Will it just be a bunch of companies trying to deceive the public through deceptive advertising? Will it be companies replicating the ad structure we saw with the Elon Musk We Alpha ad? What will it be? What direction will deepfake ads take? Will they become overregulated to the extent where bad actors will fear deceiving the public? Personally, I think it's going to be a combination of all the aforementioned things. Recently, I came across a Russian ad where they deepfaked Bruce Willis with his rights, hence fully legally. The company behind the ad was Megaphone, one of Russia's largest phone operators. They got the rights from Bruce and filmed the ad with an actor that looks a little like him. As per deepfake best practices, and voila, you've now got Bruce Willis in your ad despite his declining health condition and probable inability to fly to Russia to film the ad itself. That's how I see big corporations implementing deepfake marketing into their advertising plan, and that is the fully legal way. Now, of course, you'll also be seeing an increase in bad actors, like the same ones we showcased throughout this video, especially as the tech becomes easier to use and more readily available. But I reckon you'll also be seeing an increase in the number of related lawsuits, without a doubt. That is the future of deepfake ads in my personal opinion, but deepfake ads are just a brief portion of the problem at hand. Another big problem that's currently emerging at present is deepfake adult content. Let me know if you want a video on this topic by commenting below. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. My name is Kiro Cristales and I'll catch you on the next one.